Hello folks, I hope you're all doing well. Let's have a mosey on up the plot here. It is a beautiful day today and I have the whole day off work today. So I'm up here to do loads of jobs. I'm probably gonna split this recording into a couple of videos. I've got loads of flowers to do it, put out. So I'll do a video on how I'm doing the flowers. And I've got loads of other sort of fruit and veggies to put out. I've got the, oh, the French beans that are gonna go over there and the pea and beef, bean frame, bee frame. I've got one, one space left on there. The peas all need sorting out, they're all a bit tangled. The sweet peas need sorting out. We'll do that with the with the flowers though. What else have we got? We've got some sprouts to go out. I've got some squash to go out. So the plans about the flowers that were originally gonna go. Let's have a little walk up here. Let's walk up here, look. See where we've put this arch for the sweet peas that desperately need sorting out, but I've got a plan for them. This sort of area where the weeds are, I mean, those weeds aren't deep set. It just needs sort of dug over a little bit. And all the flowers were gonna go in there. I think I'm going to put the squash in there. That's that's a bit of a change of plan, but we'll we'll see how that one figures out. I've got a melon to plant in the polytunnel. Oh, I've got all sorts of stuff. This is loads of stuff to do, but like I say, I'm going to split it up into a couple of videos. First video going out, I think, because I sometimes change my mind as to how I'm going to do it. I'm going to plant out the the beans and the melon and the sprouts and different things like that. So you'll loads of different veggies going out and then I'll do another one about the different flowers and things and how I'm going to do them because I've got a bit of a bit of a plan on that front. And then after that, I'll see what time I've got to get on with some other jobs because there's always, there's loads of stuff needs doing stuff, needs watering up. There's endless, endless amounts of weeding needs done. I mean, let's just turn you around again here. You can see in amongst the rows of potatoes there, the, the little weeds are starting to pop up. So I think we'll get the hoe out and we'll give that a good going over. And speaking of which, I've got a new type of hoe. I've got a new attachment for the for the wolf garden stuff called a called a swow. And I saw Steve over at Greenside Up said he had one. So I thought, must get myself one of these. So I'm going to give that a bash and we'll see how that works out. Anyway, I'm off to have a, a sit down, a cup of tea, and a bit of a, a bit of a think about how I'm going to plan out all today's work. Then I'll come back to you. We'll get some record done, show you what's going on. Back with you in just a jiffy. So just before we get properly set up, one thing to show you is these two new sort of pea and bean frame things, climbing frame thingy juggies that we put in earlier this year. They're absolutely great. They're brilliant. But I've got a real thing about the netting and stuff like that that grows up. But we got. We got this stuff here, I don't know if you can you can see it from Wilco's, I think it was. And it's a bit rubbish. It was a right pain to fit. It's really tangled and messy and knotted up and stuff. And I mean it's it's on there now and it's doing a good job, but I don't want to go through the hassle of using that stuff again. So if we move over here, where I've got the peas growing up, I decided I would fashion something out of this big ball of twine that I've got. I've got to be honest, that was a bit of a pain as well. So we've been shopping, and let me just grab this. So we've been to B&M and we've got multi-purpose heavy duty garden mesh. So this, in theory, is going to go all the way along here. So what I'll do is I'll get you set up on the tripod, like I said last time, but I will do this time. And we'll get this set up first of all, we put, before we put the beans in and we'll see whether this is any good to use or not. And you can see the price there, look at that, there you go, wow, eight pound for five meters times 50 centimeters. So that should pretty much do the whole of this frame. Back with you in just a jiffy. So the biggest problem I've had so far is trying to get the camera in the right place at the right angle, because I'm squashed right in at sort of the back of the plot here. This is a big compost bin sort of thing here to my to my right hand side. And then I've got the, the frame here, but I think I've managed to, to squash in here okay. And hopefully you can see me and see this and we'll we'll give this a try to see if it's any good or not but it's all oh it's all sort of cellar taped up so you'll just have to to bear with me a wee second while we undo this so the the material of this it's like a sort of plasticky kind of material so hopefully it's gonna last me a good few years which is what i like is to I, i'm not a fan of you know the single use plastics but i wouldn't class this as a single use as such if i get a lot of years out of it then that's pretty good going and the idea is oh, bear with me a second i'm going to attach it here so it's 50 centimeters high and we're just going to put it along there i'm going to attach it to the end here i'm going to use a couple of cable ties so let's let's do that first of all and we'll get it wrapped at the end here yeah? if i don't oh crack him attacking the peas with it there that's not a good start is it right oh. 
see this is it <laughs> real time now because it's, it's all coiled up and it's springing out a second pair of hands here would be uh would be very very useful right now but unfortunately i'm here by myself so i'll just have to just have to make do right once we've got this first bit on in theory everything should become a lot easier after that so i think i'll maybe just put two cable ties on to begin with one at the top and one at the bottom of each each bit now these frames that i'm using here i don't know if you remember when i when i put them in these are two meters high but obviously they're buried in the ground a bit this is 50 centimeters high so i'm thinking maybe three lengths of this will just be about high enough in theory and apologies if i just disappeared off camera there whilst standing up and we'll do here we'll get a bit of, a bit of tension on and we'll get this through here wrapped around here come on again two pairs of hands would make this a lot easier let's pop this on there we go but at least it's nice and sunny let's look at the let's look at the positives here nice and sunny and i think the the beans are like this as well because it's nice and stable and firm and whatnot and it's good for them to grow up unlike some of the the other methods that i mentioned that would would use uh that maybe haven't quite worked out as well as i would have hoped let's scoot along here and we will put this last length on and I think once I've done this, once we've got one length on, I'm just going to snip along the, the end. And then in theory, I say another two or uh, might go to, it might go to three lengths, maybe. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. You see, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be cheap with this one. I'm going to hopefully do it just the once and then it's going to last for, for a good few years so bear with me let me <laughs> let me grab you there you're probably getting an interesting camera angle right so this is this is how it's looking so you can see it there we'll obviously trim the cable ties up and whatnot but what i'll do is i'll get that trimmed off i'll do another couple of lengths up here and i'll show you how it's looking at the end there and we'll get the beans coming up and see how they look as well back with you in just a jiffy Hopefully you can see me here because I've had to move the camera again because when I've I've dug this trench along here for the beans to go in I've managed to sort of trap myself in and I couldn't get here to get the camera and whatnot so you're up this end now and we're looking down the other way but I've got all this sort of mesh stuff up on here now it, it went on all right it's looking all right it it looks like it's going to last a long time do the job the only downside of it aesthetically it's not very pleasing it looks a bit a bit plasticky but you know we'll try all these different things out we'll see which works best and we'll maybe change things around next year but we'll see anyway so we've got a nice big long trench here for our french beans to go in and all the way along this trench is getting a good old sprinkling of fish blood and bone which is brilliant i've given all my plants that and i'm just going to give it a bit of a bit of a mix in because i don't like loads of it go right on the roots of the plants because it can sort of cause problems on the bottom of the bottom of the roots if it's if it's too strong too much of it it can sort of burn the bums of the plants so to speak and if i reach up here and bring these down this is the the beans we've got here these are a variety called cobra and they're looking absolutely brilliant they're grown in these um container wise deep root trainers that, that we use from time to time and in theory they should just pop out now there's a few things i've grown in these now i mean these that's come out quite quite nicely there in, in a wanna but I'm, I'm gonna keep keep trying them but i must admit i i do find the the hacksnicks ones a little bit easier to use in terms of the 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 stuff that the deep root stuff i mean these these are actually coming out really well the last things that are grown here i can't remember what it was whether it was peas or the sweet peas or or, or whatever it was the broad beans the 
they didn't come out very well, but maybe it's my opinions changing. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's, maybe it's I'm going to stick with these because they're looking good. But w without a shadow of a doubt, hands down, the the cell trays that you get from container wise are absolutely brilliant. But here you go. Here's here's one that's a bit a bit stuck and it's not coming out very well. It's all come out a bit tatty that one. I could feel the the roots pulling as I was uh, as I was bringing them out. But I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll we'll just do sort of half this bed at the moment, and I'll finish it off, and I'll I'll show you at the end because I'm just going to basically rinse and repeat on the next one there. So I've got these French beans in there. They're maybe spaced out about I don't know four to six inches between them all, and I'm just going to backfill it there. And this 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 is a little path that's on the back here. And I use all natural wood chips on the path. So it doesn't matter too much if I end up pulling some of the path into the trough, which isn't too bad. But I find that the, the easiest way to do this with the beans is just to dig a big long trough and then put them all out together without sort of going round doing them individually in a one of the so they're all nice and buried in there they don't need clips on them just yet they're sort of just leaning up against the mesh there I'll keep an eye on them as they get bigger I've got these little round in fact there they are there let me grab them and, and show you these I usually use these in the greenhouse as opposed to to here but these little green clips and they just sort of look around the mesh on one side and look through the plant and the they're really good. They're like two or three quid off Amazon for like a gazillion of them. So they're absolutely brilliant and you get loads of them. So what I'll do, I'll fire the rest of these beans in. Then we'll come back. I'll show you how I'm going to finish them off and what this is all looking like at the end there. Back with you in a jiffy. So that's the French beans finished. And I'm pleased to say I'm not squashed in this little gap anymore. But let me, let me spin you around a bit here and show you here. So this is the, you see the frame and we've got this sort of, cable tied on the on the side here and it goes down a bit and then we've got our trench with the french beans all the way along there it's been finished off with a load of chicken manure pellets on the top and then i've given it a good watering in and i put a little bit of seaweed feed in there as well just to just to give the plants some instant nutrition whereas that chicken manure and the blood fish and bone it's going to be slow release over time for the for the little plants there anyway that's that's great. I've been wanting to do that job for ages and I'm glad it's done and dusted and sorted. So on to the next one. I've got more stuff to plant out, loads of stuff to plant out. I think I'm going to head into the polytunnel and we're going to get the melon planted. Back with you in just a jiffy. Right, so we're in the polytunnel and I've got my little melon plant here. Now I got this from a, a plant swap event the other week. I had no intention of growing melons this year. I know nothing about growing melons. I don't know the first thing. I know that it's going to probably try and climb and that when the when or if i should say any fruits come on it that i need to support them with something and most people use a nice pair of tights so we'll uh, we'll have to see about that and unfortunately for those of you who like seeing inside the polytunnel we're not going to be in here very long today because if i grab this let's have a look it's currently 32 degrees in here and it's very 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 humid 26 percent humidity it feels it feels more than that at the moment anyway but yeah, I've got, hopefully you can see it. I'm right sort of squashed in at the end of the polytunnel here because I've only got one space here left and one space down the far end there behind the cucumbers. And there's a, another pepper plant going to go in sort of down the bottom there. So we've got the, the halo pot in there. We've got our melon. And actually, just before I do that, if I can find it, bear with me a second. We'll put some fish blood and bone again in the hole there so it's got plenty of nutrition just give it a little bit of a mix around and again in goes the melon plant so there you go now you know as much as i do about melons if anybody has any top tips about grown melons or knows about grown melons please let me know because like i say i know absolutely nothing about it and i'm being a bit careful here because I'm, I'm being lazy and I'm not, not using my cover for the halo pot. So I need to be careful not to get compost 
in the well bit around the outside for the water and as always with the halos we don't fill the middle sort of planting bit up right to the top because the compost will sort of flood over as you as you water it because to, to begin with the roots of the plant are all inside the central part of the halo so if you water into the trough and it goes underneath the roots aren't going to get it so you need to water from the top to begin with until these plants are established in the halos and that's when you can start to use that trough or well whatever you want to call it around the outside there so that's some of that in there oh man it's absolutely roasting in here so i'm gonna give this a quick water again we'll let that come up to the top i'm just gonna let it sink into the compost and i'll give it another water and what i'll do throughout the day I'll just every now and again just squish a little bit of water in there just so it's getting soaked all the way down into the compost like I say these halo pots are great but only once the plants are established and the roots are going down beneath them so as you can see it's got I can see it here this has got a little tendril on it on the melon as well and it's just sort of starting to to lean over I'm probably going to use a cane like this so I'll grab one of the canes from up there we'll get that tied in and sorted but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rush outside of the polytunnel. I've got some more tomatoes too. We've got some outdoor tomatoes too. So we've got new beds outside. Let's fire out there. Let's get the tomatoes in. And then we're just about done for this one because it's roasting in here. So we've got the camera. Let's get out of the polytunnel. <sighs> what a relief coming out of there. It's like, you know, when you, when you go on holiday somewhere nice and warm and you get off the plane and the heat just hits you. That's what's like going inside there. And when you come outside, it's like getting off the plane when you come home although i don't know maybe it's a bit of a bit of a bad subject to talk about at the moment because some some poor people out there have been struggling with the holidays i mean i've seen it on the news i don't know too much about it but people getting flights cancelled holidays cancelled stuff they've had on pause and delayed and stuff like that for two years during covid and eventually get the holiday and things are getting cancelled because of the airports and the holiday companies i mean that's Oh, it's blooming awful, man, honestly. Right, let's have a, a little walk down here and I'll spin you around. So this area here, it looks like a bit of a mess because it's, it's only just been put in. You remember a couple of videos ago when we were doing the, the polytunnel, we had plenty of compost left. So we put in two new pallet colour raised beds. This one here that I've just given a good water in is where our tomatoes are going to go. So these are a bush variety. I don't know the variety. These were given to me as a gift by one of my... Um, plot neighbours and I was chatting to her just before and she was saying she's got some and somebody else has got some and somebody else has got some she goes it'll just be like a competition oh man now I'm gonna go and get all competitive and trying to get these to grow and I've never I've never really done outside bush tomatoes before so again this is a this is a first time for me so we've got melons for the first time inside there and we've got these bush type tomatoes for the first time out here and it's going to be a bit of a competition so we're going to have to hope that they grow well so i've got six of them that'll just be about sort of nice space and i think for this this pallet collar raised bed in here so we'll get you hooked up on the tripod and we'll get these planted out and show you what it all looks like at the end when we've got all this finished right so there's not much to this raised bed at the moment it's just a a pallet collar that's been lined with the old sort of compost bags there to, to protect the wood and this is some of our um kelpie compost as it's called now i did give it a bit of a water run but it's you know it's wet on the top it's a bit dry underneath so once i'm finished off it'll be getting a good old soaking again and probably whilst i'm up here like pretty much all day throughout this day i'm going to be watering it once or twice you know in the afternoon as well just to give it a good soaking through when it's new compost and it's a bit dry and and all that sort of stuff anyway these are lovely little plants they're absolutely beautiful and one question actually for people if people are anybody still watching by now is on bush variety tomatoes that i've never grown before do you pinch the suckers out because i can see this one here has got one two suckers at least obviously they're going to bush out do i pinch them out or do i just leave them let me know in the comments please if anybody knows the answer to that but these were tiny when they were given to me and i've had them in the polytunnel just trying to give them a bit of a bit of a head start in life before they get planted out but i say it's, it's 19 degrees today it's supposed to be absolutely beautiful and we're going to use that old monty don technique there of of the backward shoveling with the trowel let's put it in there and put oh man you know what i forgot to do i forgot to put blood fish and bone in the hole oh, 
Man, I think that means it's lunchtime soon. I'm forgetting to do that. I need, I need a cup of tea and a sandwich. But let's finish this job first before we do that. Right, there we go. Some of that in the hole. Bit of compost sprinkled on the top. Mix it in. And this time, we'll put our tomato in. Right, let's get that all covered up. And I think for six of them, will be there and there. So yeah, just around about a trowel's length apart. And I'll probably do them about a trowel's width apart. So I'm gonna do the same here. Let's just dig that hole and we'll see how these look. Let's not forget this this time. Let's get a good, a good sprinkling in there. Uh, it's definitely nearly lunchtime or coffee time or tea time or whatever time it is. Right, let's get another one of these. Oh, crikey. I'll do that one afterwards because there's actually four plants in that pot. So I might need to rethink how we're going to do this. I probably should have checked these before I put them out. Here's another lovely one. Right, let's, let's get this in there. All right, get that covered up. There we go. Right, looking fab. What I'll do is I'll finish this off as before. When I do the other ones, you don't need to see me doing the same thing again and again and again and again. We'll get this bed finished off and I'll come back to you at the end there and we'll have a look about how everything's looking and I'll tell you what's coming up in the next few videos and whatnot. So back with you in just a moment. And that's another job done. Let me spin you around here and have a look. Here we go, there we go. So we've actually got two, four, six, nine plants in here. I had only planned on putting about six in there, but it turns out one of the pots had four plants in it. So we split them up. So I'll put the three in the end here and the others are just a little bit closer than I'd planned. But we'll see how they go when they bush out. Remember, I asked that question if anybody knows about pinching out the suckers on bush tomatoes. Do I do that or not? So I think that's, that's just about it for today. The tomatoes are out. The French beans are out over there. What else do we do? We put the melon in the polytunnel. I've got loads more stuff to plant out, but you don't need to see me doing the same thing again and again and again. Plant loads of stuff out. So I'm going to do the squash, I think, next. And I've got some fennel to put out down the far end there. And some other bits and pieces, but I'll catch up with them on another video once it's all done. And we've got some more stuff coming up soon, all about the different flowers and things that we're putting out. So keep an eye out for that one. And there's always loads of stuff going on. I might do something about how I'm watering up the polytunnel because we've been watching the, the Potty Mouth Garden Club and we've got some of that CalMag stuff and the different nutrition and things that we're giving the, the tomato plants, the cucumber plants, the peppers, the chilies, the aubergines and things that are in there, different watering methods that we're using and all that sort of stuff anyway. But that's me done for today. If you want to think about watching some of that, please think about subscribing. It's absolutely free. You just need to click the button below and it doesn't cost you anything. But I'm going to head off now for some lunch and a cup of tea. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now folks.